There's a lot of interest on gender and disaster risk, especially coming from donors. As a consequence, there's a lot of advocacy and policy notes out there, and a lot of them are based on very little evidence uh, when discussing this issue. There's a huge discrepancy between the interest in this topic and what we actually know. And a lot of this is due to a lack of data. Our existing data collection tools do a generally poor job in capturing the differences in how men and women are affected differently from disasters. Um, a lot of this is due to the fact that it's more expensive to collect individual level data, which we need to do gender-based analysis. But it's also due to a lack of knowledge on the channels through which different populations are affected by disasters differently. For example, our DRM tools uh, can give us the location of a house that was destroyed in an earthquake. But if the wife residing in the house keep all of her assets inside of the house, while the husband keeps them in a savings account at the bank, then obviously these two individuals will experience the disaster very differently. We know from global data that women have lower access to bank accounts than men, but household survey data from countries usually captures banking information at the household level, making it difficult to assess how those gender gaps translate into disaster vulnerabilities for our purposes. And there are several examples like this one. Mainstreaming literature often repeat that men and women are affected differently from disasters, but practitioners and policymakers lack a common framework to understand the channels through which this happens. So what did we do to address this? Well, in an upcoming report, the GFDRR analytics team have uh, consolidated research and data uh, to understand how gender dynamics influence disaster risk and resilience. And we've organized these findings around what we believe is an operationally useful framework. In the framework, we look at gender gaps in exposure, vulnerability, preparedness and coping capacity as determinants of disaster impacts. And using this framework, we identify policy recommendations that can help mitigate differentiated impacts of disasters based on gender and promote a more inclusive disasters management agenda. So what comes next? Well, there's um, a big gap in measuring and understanding the impacts of DRM policies and interventions. DRM lag behind other sectors in doing rigorous impact evaluations. This is something that would help us breach the data gap discuss discussed earlier, while also helping us understand how our policies and intervention impact different population groups. It's important to remember that a global report like ours do not replace the need for local assessments. Operations teams and policymakers need resources and guidance on how to do a gender gap assessments um, and how to account for them as part of the policy design. If local assessments are carried out using a common framework, it would also help our efforts in building global knowledge on this topic. And the framework that we developed as part of this report can be a first step towards coming up with a common framework that can use, be used uh, in different contexts. So this report is called Gender Dynamics of Disaster Risk and Resilience, and it clearly concludes that men and women inside of the house, same households are affected very differently from disasters. It also shows that uh, in accounting for gender gaps as part of policy design will not only improve results for women and girls, it makes projects better for all populations. Thank you very much.